Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Celeste. And I'm Chell. And welcome to Heavy Worship Nation, season two, Into the Lie. Woo! So it exciting. Is here. It is here. I am so excited. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you guys how long it has been. It feels like it's been a century since Chill and I have gone together like this in a podcast. I mean, how long, how long ago was that? Do you remember? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, from a production standpoint, we stopped producing in like November. So we mm-hmm. wrapped everything up in November, just in time for us to enjoy Thanksgiving. And so much happened from, <laughs> <laughs> from November yeah. to now. So much happened. So yeah, it's it's been a little bit. It, it has been a little bit. But it's I mean, been a little bit, a lot of bit, a, a, a medium bit. But I mean, it's not like we don't work on the podcast because yes. even we, even when we're not recording, we're constantly talking and thinking and brainstorming and networking. Mm-hmm. I we think- got a lot of people uh, down on this. We'll, we'll go into that later, but we got a lot of peeps coming. Yeah. And we get your, your panties in a bunch and get ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know there's been I, I know a few people reached out to me and been like what's going on you've been kind yeah. of quiet and it's like well I'm not even gonna you know you can just you can lead us <laughs> into that flow all right so uh I just wanted to say I am so glad to be back once again with you guys and honestly I feel like this is such a great outlet for me to be able to come here and just feel like it's a safe space to talk about anything to just you know say our how our week has been what god has done in our lives and obviously go over you know what's going to come uh to fruition but i i definitely uh wanted to say that man you know i when i was a kid i used to love the holidays and uh i don't know what it is like i'm getting older and i'm getting more like the grinch every every year (laughs) and I'm just like why is that I don't know I'm just I guess because as a kid it's kind of like I fantasized it I I uh idolized it you know Mm -hmm. like the holidays and I'd be like oh the presents the you know the the food the blah blah blah. but I like I I would lose sight of like God and all of it like Mm -hmm. in Thanksgiving and Christmas especially and so now it was just and even New Year's like you guys this is my first this was my first new year's that I ever spent alone like without anybody in the house like in in my own place like it was just so weird but honestly it was so great to ring in the new year with Jesus like I had my worship music on just like I was just having that quiet time and honestly that's been like that was like the highlight of, of my year because I never thought I would would be getting to that point where I would be like, you know what, like, it's fine. Like, I don't need to be going out and like having a kiss from, you know, my husband or, you know, being with my family because they have their own stuff too. And, you know, just, just a bunch of stuff going on. And so, um, and also it did help that I was listening to um, Blue Fire Horizons podcast as well, because <laughs> they were talking about how some of them are a little bit of a Grinch as well on Christmas, kind of regarding the same kind of uh, ordeal that I'm talking about. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's kind of what's been happening. But I'm, I'm ready to get back into the grind, baby, because I've been sick. I, I, I've been going for school full time. I've been going to work. I've been dealing with, you know, my sister's wedding that's going to happen next. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This Saturday. I'm not, gonna, not next week. What the heck? And so it's just been go, go, go. And so I feel like this is like just it's, I feel like it's been a long road coming and I'm I'm finally having some serenity. So, right. Everything's the 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 calm down from the storm because the storm's passed. Mm-hmm. I will say this. Uh I think as a child, there's not, you don't have any responsibility, you know? So that's all you can look forward to is the hype, mm-hmm. the hype and the gifts. And then as you get older, it's like, okay, well, there's a little bit of responsibility. I have to buy things for people now. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. But when, you, but when you become a parent, let me just let y'all out there know. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to maintain that level of hype. Uh, shout out to all the parents out there that are keeping Christmas alive because I didn't even know that was a legitimate thing 
I didn't. <laughs> I did not know that. What? But it is. The Christmas spirit's a real thing. Yeah. So I think honestly for me, like I'm happy that the holidays are over just because for me, it's very exhausting mm-hmm. uh, emotionally. You know, I, I have, I think my tendency really is to suppress. So for so long, I've suppressed stuff. Now that I'm getting around to actually feeling the depth of my emotions, it's like Ooh. overwhelming. Mm-hmm. But I think next year for sure, I definitely don't want to stay the way that I've been to where, yeah. you know, I suppress and I put my focus on work or anything else. Instead, I really want to like feed that holiday spirit because there's nothing wrong with it. But I think you're right. I think that the focus, once it gets shifted away from Christ, that's where it all goes south. So yes. I think. I think next holiday season, what I'm going to do different, just so that way I don't get that burnout again, is keep the focus on Christ. That's it. You know, yes. I'm thinking like, uh, cause you know, I'm, I'm not, I do do Bible plans. I do, but outside of Bible plans, I read my Bible all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why am I not doing like my own devotional? Right. Why can't I do my own devotional for Thanksgiving month? And why can't I do my own devotional for Halloween month? And why can't I do my own devotional for Christmas month? Yeah. Like, why can't I do that? I think I am going to do that. But overall. Do it, dude. I'll I'll do the plan on my, on my blab. I don't, I don't care. I'll just let me know when it's out. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'll let you know. But, um, that's what I was thinking about just doing more devotionals like that. So very excited for me. I think my favorite part about working on the podcast is the build up to recording so yes. it's like making sure that everything's polished all the dots <laughs> all the cross t's everything's just nice and flowing i enjoy that process a lot and then when we actually get to record it's just like the cherry on top man mm-hmm. so See, I'm and that, that's where you and i differ because i can't Dan, the little oh really <laughs> because it ma- it gives me anxiety because i'm just like oh we can't forget about this and and what about this and and we got to do this in a certain amount of time and and see i i like i like feel like i bloom when when we hit record and it's like free reign because it's like it's done like it's done and we get to just talk y'all's ears off and and just be our goofy selves but you know what i mean and it's so crazy that you say that because it's like I'm a, I'm a teacher too so you think I would like the little details which I do but when it comes to this I guess I put it so high up here I'm like I just want it to be perfect I want this to you know what I mean so I, I just think too much but yeah I'm, I'm so glad that that you shared that because it's it, like it definitely a, shows you know I'm a, I'm a very focused person so for mm-hmm. me to be able to just buckle down and like laser focus into this it really does relax me I know it's strange <laughs> see and that's because I I have like 80 ADHD so I'm just like bing bong 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 squirrel bong, 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 you know and, and I'm just like let's go come on let's go like it's just it makes sense why I'm a drummer you that's know. cool dude you know what? it works though and I think really that's that's how you know the Lord's working in this because he's like okay mm-hmm. we're gonna put these two together like Aaron <laughs> and Moses right Moses you stutter it's all right we got Aaron right alongside with you you know yes <laughs> like legit I am the stutterer and you're just like thou shall not blah 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 and I'm just like what like I wish you know but <laughs> oh, that's oh funny. man so <laughs> The reason why we are calling this whole season Into the Light Texas Edition is because we want to start this out in our home state. We yes. want all of all of the bands that that we can at least find and and think of any word of mouth, any way that we can that we don't already know of. Like we want to get them on the bill to like to be able to, you know, of course, ask them questions and hear their testimonies and hear why they you know, wrote this song and, and whatnot, but honestly, it's super important because it, it kind of takes me back from when we started, um, San Antonio Christian metal, and we were just going to do San Antonio bands only. And we were like, so adamant about that. And now yeah. that I look back, I'm like, man, I don't know if we, if we would have gotten that far because there's, there's not that many San Antonio Christian bands that I can think of on the top of my head. Not yet, but that's the amazing thing about this whole 
this whole thing that we're working on. All right. Mm -hmm. So when me and Celeste started this, um, it was really rooted in building community. Yeah. We went to a couple shows and we're like, man, these guys are so good. Why is there not more people? Why not? Mm -hmm. So, you know, season one, for those of you who haven't listened to it, it was just building a good foundation uh, about heavy worship, what it is, why you do it, you know, how you can be in community, how you can fellowship things of that nature to where from now every season moving forward we're going to be looking regionally because again our heart is not only set on the lord but mm -hmm. it's very much set on community so it it did make sense for us to focus on texas and what i'm finding throughout all of this you know because and please if you're out there listening and if you know anybody if you know anybody who's touring recording releasing music and they're in texas send us a message. We want to talk to them. We want to know yes, because there are a lot of bands out there and I know that we're probably missing a lot of them still too. Yeah. But nonetheless, um, we've been getting some really good feedback and one of the ones, at least one person reached out to me and it made me really sad just to hear that they were excited for the West coast. They're like, man, you know, we really want to know what's happening in Washington state and what's happening in mm -hmm. Oregon. Cause right now it doesn't seem like there's anything. And I know that's a bunch of baloney. I know yeah. that it's happening. We just don't know. We're going to find you. We're going to find, we're gonna find you. Gonna you. We're going to hunt you down and we're going to talk to you because that's what we do. Right. We're a nation and we're trying to develop this nation of ours globally. So yeah, that's why we started Texas first, just because uh, that's where we are. In case you didn't know, we're in San Antonio, Texas. Yes, I love that. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that is such a good way to like go into this whole thing. Because I remember when we went to our first show together and it was at Fitzgerald's mm -hmm. and we were like, man, why are these bands so good? And yet people are out here, like there's hardly anybody here. And if there are people there, it's just like their family. Like mm -hmm. there's not a lot of just, you know, like a, like a following. And I'm like, oh no, we are going to build them up. We are going to find ways to build a community for, you know, just heavy worship in general. Um, you know, talking to the guys, even though, you know, at first it was like, I am from heavy worship nation, you know, but like now it's just kind of like, Hey, like I'm Celeste from heavy worship nation. And this is chill. Like legit, you guys, Oh my gosh. I need, I, I got to bring this up with the podcast. I went, it, I swear this, this is a God, this is a God thing that we're doing because mm -hmm. I, I went to a Starbucks close by church, right? I did not expect any, anybody to like know who I was or whatever, I was wearing um, a band from New York. Their their name is Brutality. And so when I went there, I was with my friend Leah. Um, she's such a great person, by the way. I know she listens to this. So shout out to Leah. I love hey, you. Hey, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, wanted to, I wanted to say, man, it was so crazy. So one of the baristas reached out to me and she was like, hey, uh, how do you know Brutality? And I was like, well... I went to that show that was at Fitzgerald's like a while back with my friend and um you know uh, we actually have a podcast called Heavy Worship Nation. She's like, "Oh my gosh, that's you?" And I'm like, "What do you mean that's me? What wait, wait, like what? You know who I am?" And so and then like her other coworkers were like, "Yeah, we know you guys." I'm like, "What?" She's like, "Oh, I'm I'm the fiance of the singer of Stonewall Static, who was also there. And I was just like, what in the world is going on? Like, like this is like, this never mm -hmm. happens. Like, I remember when, obviously, you know, when I was doing my own thing with the secular bands and I was like getting known from that, but this was like the first time anyone ever like noticed like of what God was doing mm -hmm. in my life. And it was just so trippy and like, they were like, can I get a picture of you in that shirt? Like, I got to tell them and this and that. I was like, oh my gosh, like that just, and Leah was like, what? Like, I guess it made it like real for her that we actually do this because it, yeah. like she actually saw an encounter happen because it's, uh -huh. you know, it's online. And so um, it was just really cool because it was kind of like, like God validating like what we're doing and like, 
putting that in there because that wasn't that was literally like the day before there was another incident like that and Mm -hmm. legit like like it just it happened back to back so like I know it's from the Lord like there's just no way that you can deny that you know what I mean yeah yeah that's super cool but again I mean that's that's kind of what we want you Mm -hmm. know we want you guys to be like hey I know you can we have a picture and tag us yes I mean, community is so important we cannot we cannot do life on our own it's not possible so that's always been the heart of heavy worship nation is to bring people together to praise the lord globally that's it and i think if anything mm-hmm. me personally uh i have a tendency not only to suppress my emotions but to run you know mm. I, I want to avoid it i want to run from it so, I mean, I shared this with you guys on the last episode for season one, that no matter how hard to try, I can't leave San Antonio and I'm trying. <laughs> oh, oh, she is. She so is. <laughs> so it's like, okay, Lord, you want me to start something here and you want me to build something here. That's fine. And I know for a lot of people out there, you have that same sentiment. You're like, man, I want to get out of here. There's nothing happening here. It's just not my scene. It's not my crowd. It's not my town, you know, whatever, whatever. But the truth is your environment is what you make of it. And if anything, you know, I definitely want to be that encouragement and that inspiration to let you know, because who was it? It was the prophet Elijah. He was running away from Jezebel because she was trying to kill him. (laughs) <laughs> and there he is talking to the lord and he's like i'm the only prophet left why did you leave me like this just kill me now like that's that's what his attitude yeah. was just kill me now and the lord's like what makes you think that you're the only prophet right Ooh. and Elijah's just like because i am jezebel's killing all the other ones because she was mm-hmm. and the lord's like that's not true i've set aside seven thousand just because you don't see them and you don't know them doesn't mean that they're not there they're just as faithful Ooh. as you So I just want to encourage you guys, if you're new to your faith and you feel like you're all alone, like I have been there, I have been there. And I just want you to know, like, no, there are brothers and sisters. There is Mm -hmm. a whole new life out there waiting for you. It's just a matter of finding it. And I think one of the verses that has always stuck out to me um, is, I think it's in Matthew when Jesus was preaching and he was saying, seek and you will find, knock. And the door will be open, you know, ask and it'll be given to you. So as long as you you diligently seek the Lord, you will find him. You will. And if you diligently seek that community, you diligently seek those friendships, you diligently seek that new life in Christ, you'll get it. And for those of you out there who maybe you're on the fence, you don't know, you know, if this Jesus stuff is for you or, you know, it just doesn't, I don't, I believe in God, but I don't know if Jesus is the real deal. I promise you, you keep seeking him and he will keep showing up. He absolutely will. And for those of us who have been living this life for a good while now, the more friends, the merrier. Yes. The more friends, the merrier. I definitely agree with that so much because community is really important. And Jesus specifically says that so many times in the, in the Bible to have community and like just healthy people around you. And, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, we got to go sometimes to the dark places and, and I mean, you guys will hear that more. And when we uncover, uh, can I tell them the band that that we just did, or you want it to be a surprise? Let's be surprised. I kind of want it to be a surprise just because we have, we've got so many bands in store and honestly, from the bands that we have lined up right now, that's just the tip of the iceberg. It is just the tip of the iceberg. And I'm very, very confident that by the time we are done with season two, Mm -hmm. the other seasons are just going to be, it's going to, you remember, you remember when Jesus told Peter to cast the net into the ocean and they hadn't been catching nothing all day. Uh And so Peter's uh like, there's no fish there. And Jesus is like, trust me, bro, do it. So he did. And like the net was just overflowing and bursting. Mm -hmm. in the name of jesus that's what's going to happen with us i I know it already (laughs) amen dude that is that is so good and speaking of that i wanted to go into why because people have asked us especially Mm -hmm. chill why uh 
aren't we covering bands that have already existed and they're not active anymore? The reason why is because we are wanting to grow the community more. We want people to find out about these bands that, that are still out there or people don't even know them yet. Yeah. Um, you know, especially like if they're on tour, if they're recording, you know, their releases, everything. We want to support them and, and help grow their ministry because obviously bands like for today, even though they're amazing, they're not here anymore. So it's like, how can we grow their ministry if it's like, you know what I mean? Like it's how do I say that? It it they're not done, but it's just kind of like they're not active anymore. So we can't really support them already with what's already being done, like on Spotify and stuff like that. We can show their music, but it's like, you know, we really want people to come and support these bands at their shows. Like, yeah. even if they're not, if even if you're not in the same city, like, you know, go like, go share, go, go listen to their messages. Or, um, you know, especially if they, they have their own podcasts, like I didn't even know until a while back the blue fire horizon had their own podcast mm -hmm. and obviously they're not from texas but it's just kind of like those things like go follow them and see like you know what they're producing what they're what they're trying to get out there to help bring light to you know the world of what jesus is telling them to do oh yeah um anything else you wanted to say because I, I i know i'm like going no, on a little you're fine. tangent there but i mean there's there's that's the unfortunate thing Okay, there are so many bands out there that only made one release. They release one EP, mm -hmm. they release one album, and it's just because they couldn't get the steam to keep going. That's a big yeah. issue. Um, for a lot of musicians, the thing that plagues us is depression and anxiety. Uh, you're going to hear a lot about, you know, insecurities and unworthiness. Mm -hmm. That's just, that comes with the territory of being a musician and a performer. Um, so a lot of times these musicians, they let those voices, those emotions that aren't, that are not rooted in truth, mm -hmm. just take hold of them. And so they bow out and they stop. And for me, I think that's why it's so important to focus on these active bands, to let them know, like, no, we appreciate you. We like what you're doing. We want to see yes. you. We want to hear you. Please keep going. That's how it's going to continue to grow. So that's why our focus is on the active bands. Um, and I'm sure once we get done doing regional things, we can mm -hmm. go back and look at the bands that aren't active anymore, you know, for whatever reason, we can definitely go over those, but it is so important. It's so important to just show that support. Even if you can't, if you can't see them live, that's okay. You can like the posts, you can mm -hmm. engage with them, comment wise, comment on their stuff, share it. All of those things matter. It doesn't seem like it matters, but it matters so much. And it's all free. It doesn't cost you anything to repost or yes. to share or to engage. It costs nothing. So, um, yeah, that's, that's my whole thing. You know, we got to speak life over situations. Yes. Especially if they feel like they're not going anywhere or doing anything with their, you know, their music. And it's like, if it's for the Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to promote you. You know what I mean? And it's just so important that, that a lot of, especially a lot of these musicians, which me included, not so much anymore, but I used to be so obsessed with how many followers I would have and mm -hmm. how many likes I would get and how many comments I would get, especially when it, when it came to my band's music, like, I'd be like, Oh, what are they saying? Like, do they like it? You know, is, what about the the record company are they gonna like you know what I, mean? I would just be so enmeshed with that and it's like just because we're christian doesn't mean that we don't fall into that same that same hole you know like sometimes like we get so enmeshed in that like we need other people to like bring us out of that and that's also why we're here because we want to be able to help these people and let them see that that they are doing good for the lord and that you know, to get out of their head and to really yeah. just go back to where they started. Like that, I always think of that song, The Heart of Worship uh, by, I, I forget his name, but the one that, his name is Michael, I think, the one that sings Awesome God. Mm -hmm. But I always think of that song going back to the heart of worship of why you start doing this in the first place. And so, um, but yeah, that was like the main thing. And I know we already talked about focusing on community and um i know we wanted to go into plugging our social media if you wanted to do that or unless unless you wanted me to to go ahead and do that you can do it if you want to 
Okay. So, (laughs) um, of course, you guys know, at least the ones have been listening, for those of you who are just checking out our podcast right now, we are Heavy Worship Nation on Facebook. We have a Facebook group that we constantly try to talk on. Uh, We have Instagram under Heavy Worship Nation. We have a Twitter now. For those who are like, when is a Twitter happening? It's heavy and so it's worship he- at worship heavy on twitter yeah and and my, i'm already getting some people on twitter dude like it's crazy yeah and I've so never, I'm, i never checked twitter i don't yes do dude and and they're on it a lot of people on twitter are are engaged they're like there's heavy worship like a lot of christians out there i'm like yes dude i'm like go follow my uh my podcast with my friend and so anyways twitter tiktok heavy worship nation um but yeah, we're just trying to be able to, you know, build up the community and try to get all of the musicians that we've interviewed together, even people that don't even are starting to get into heavy worship. I've met people that are starting to get into it. You know, like this is where you can find like new music coming out. Mm-hmm. This is where you can um, make new friends, mm-hmm. you know, especially if you don't have people in your town that, you know, you can't find like there will be someone that you can connect with. And if not, you can always message us. Yeah. Even if we don't answer right away, you know, because, you know, working and, and school and everything and whatnot, worship team, um, we will always find a way to contact you back and definitely appreciate all the people that have reached out on our social media pages as well. Mm -hmm. And even told other people about us. And that's honestly, that's all we want. Like, we don't want the fame. We don't want the glory. We don't want anything. We just want it we just want to glorify the Lord and what we're doing and um, helping people get connected with each other to yeah. have really good friendships. And that's the main thing about it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I couldn't have said it any better. So oh, again, you. if y'all know anybody, seriously, since we're focusing on Texas, if y'all, if y'all know anybody, anybody, mm-hmm. anybody, solo artists, it don't matter, honey. It matter. Just reach out to us and let us know. Be like, hey, have you heard of this? Or did you know about mm-hmm. that man? Let us know. Let us know. Yes. And without further ado, like we do in every episode, it, it has not changed. We are still going to cover the gospel and the salvation prayer because that is what is most important out of all that we're doing. Yes, so go ahead and take it away, my friend. All right. So what is the gospel? uh the gospel is actually a a greek word translated to english that actually means the good news right so what is the good news the good news well i guess we should start with the bad news first right i'm I'm definitely one of those people to where if you got good news bad news i want the bad news first yes me too (laughs) (laughs) so the bad news is that we are living in a fallen world filled with broken people and we see sin all day, nonstop murders, robberies, injustices. You turn on the TV and that's what we see. That's the bad news. Uh, the bad news is that there are no perfect people. People will disappoint you. You are going to get hurt. You probably have been abused. You probably have maybe some resentment and all of those things are just a result of living in this fallen world. Now, when God created us, God created us perfect. We were supposed to live forever and we were supposed to be in communion with him and we were supposed to be in a garden and we weren't supposed to know sin. We weren't supposed to know evil. We weren't supposed to know sickness. We weren't supposed to know death. But unfortunately, uh, people chose to take on that knowledge. They chose to rebel against God and be disobedient. And because of that action, that cut us off from being in a right, right relationship with God. So we were cast out of this perfect place, even though we were created to live forever and still have that desire to live forever. We no longer could. We're now victim to death, to death, to sin, to all types of things like disease that just wasn't supposed to be. So here we are now. That's the bad news. And I'm not telling y'all anything that you don't know. You're like, yeah, I know I live here. It's been like this Mm -hmm. my whole life. But the good news, the good news is that God himself when we rebelled, knew that this was too much for us to bear. And instead of being a wrathful, vengeful, insensitive, you can never know me 
kind of God. He took it upon himself to make things right, knowing full well that we could not, even though we deserve 100% to be where we are because we chose it. He knew we couldn't bear it. So God did the most loving thing that he could do and come, he came to this earth as himself in the form of a man to bear the weight of that sin. And that man's name is Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ came, lived a perfect sinless life and took the penalty of becoming sin, becoming a curse, bearing the wrath of God when he was crucified, dead for us, right? The Bible teaches that the wages of sin is death. So the only way that you could ever be in right standing with God is to die for your sins. That's it. Unless you live a perfect life, which is not possible. But Jesus did make it possible. He did make a way. When he died on that cross, when he died, he took on all of that sin, all of that debt, rose from the grave on the third day, which gave us victory to now boldly go before God and say, you know what? I, I, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I recognize that I'm not perfect. I recognize that I fall, fall so short of this. Can you accept me anyways? Can you forgive me anyways? That is what Jesus did. He made a way for us to be able to be in right standing and for us to be able to get into heaven, not based off of what we do, but based off of his goodness and what he did. So that's the good news. So for those of you out there who don't know how to get to heaven, that's how you get to heaven. Has nothing to do with you. Has everything to do with Jesus. He is your admission ticket. So when you do get to heaven, instead of being like, I'm a good person, I deserve to be here. It's more like, no, you see that guy right there, Jesus? Hey, Jesus, what's up? Can I get in? It's the relationship that you form with Christ that gets you into heaven. And that relationship is a very easy one to start. So if this is your first time hearing this, if you're like, man, I didn't know that all I had to do was believe in Jesus because he did everything for me. I want that. That's not, that's like really good news because it's so simple. You're right. It is. And all you have to do is pray. If, if hearing the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he paid the wages for your sins so you can be led into heaven. And so that way you can be a new creation and you want to accept that today. I'm going to go ahead and pray for us right now. It's called the salvation prayer. And you can absolutely take hold of that gift. So Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for making a way for us to be in right standing. Thank you for paying a debt that we could never pay. And thank you for your grace that saves us through and through. Father, we ask for anybody who's listening, Lord, that has chosen to accept this beautiful gift in Jesus Christ, that you fill them with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Help them to renew their mind. Help them to soften their heart. Help them, Lord, to just see you more and more working in their lives. And I pray, Father, that you give them a new life, that you give them a new identity in Christ, that you help them to get deeper into your word. And most importantly, Lord, that you help them to walk in this new life, making new friendships and just seeing and hearing the world in a new way with eyes and ears that you give them, Lord. So we pray, Father, that you protect everybody who's hearing this. We pray, Lord, that you provide for them as they step out in faith and accept this gift. And we pray, Father, that your supernatural peace and love just overflow over everyone who's hearing this so that way they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are real. Just touch their heart and move them, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Chill, for sharing that. And if you accepted Jesus Christ as, as your Lord and Savior, hallelujah. Welcome to the family. Woo! I am so, so glad that you decided to make that choice because honestly, that is the best choice that you'll ever, ever make in your entire life. And the fact that we get the free will to do so, especially living in the United States, of being able to really have the freedom to express that we are Christians, that is just something so beautiful. Yeah. And I'm just so, so thankful that you're here, that you're listening, whoever you are, we are grateful for you. We love you and we can't wait to celebrate with you. Yes. Oh, guys, y'all are in for a surprise mm-hmm. In for a surprise. So until next time, Thank you for listening to Heavy Worship Nation. Stay safe out there. Bye, friends. Bye, guys.